Okay, we will start the lecture soon. So please turn on your camera. Okay, thank you. Uh, before we start, uh, do you have any question about the previous lecture or the assignment? <coughs> if you already uh, working on your assignment, that is. No, okay, fine. Uh, Today we will discuss a topic about system documentation. Okay. Um, if you have been involved in any event as a committee or people who uh, work on that event, I think you will identify that one part of the committee <coughs> would be the documentation. Uh, department or documentation section. Most of the time, documentation section uh, are associated with creating pictures, video, photo about the event. However, uh, the documentation itself is not limited to just pictures or video or recording of the event, but also all the meeting minutes uh, for the committee when, when they prepare for the events or after the events, the evaluation, <coughs> all the uh, letter that being sent out to other parties asking for uh, sponsorship, for example, or inviting certain people to your event, uh, all the letters that being sent to the committee that has to be uh, documented as part of the uh, story, if you like, about the event that uh, you manage. Okay. In developing or using system, in information system, <coughs> documentation is also vital in that you can imagine this. Uh, Building a system or uh, developing uh, an application, computer application, is an abstract activities. Okay. If you use an application, say internet banking, or even just this uh, Microsoft Teams, okay. what we see is what we face in front of our eyes. Uh, You'll see pictures, you'll see video, you'll see menus, things like that. But behind the scene, there are plenty of work has to be done. For example, uh, people who develop Microsoft Teams need to think on how to capture the video, how to send the video from my device to Microsoft servers, and how to deliver the video from Microsoft servers to your devices. That's happened behind the scene. Uh, all of us could not see it without uh, specific techniques or tools. Therefore, in developing information system, documentation is very, very important. I cannot stress enough how important it is because that's the only way we can track the progress of the development of the system. Let's compare it to building a house or a office. <clears throat> With building the office, from start, from the planning, you can see the model, you know, the, the, the drawing of the office or uh, houses. By looking at the drawing, you can have a 
pictures on your mind on how the end result, which is the house of the Pildale, will look like. And most of the time, between the picture, the model, maybe the market, or even uh, and also the drawing, will look exactly the same, or at least very similar, closely similar to the actual building. So between the picture and the actual building are quite uh, close. There are probably some uh, changes, but usually it's not that significant that, you know, completely change the appearance of a building or a house. But with a system, information system, application, when we create the design, the model, it would not look like or behave like the actual system. Later we will uh, we will learn about diagrams. You create a diagrams, and I believe uh, you're already familiar with diagrams. For example, if you go to uh, <coughs> police station and you want to uh, apply for driver's license, there is a step by step uh, <coughs> process on how would you apply for driver license. Follow that step and you're good. Okay. But with the system, it's not that uh, simple. The picture, the diagram would not look like the actual system. <coughs> okay, uh, let me find another, uh, an example. Okay, uh, I'll share you this. This probably not. Okay, so can you see it? Can you see the data? Yeah. Okay. Looking at the diagram, uh, do you know what application being developed here? Anybody? Looking at this diagram, could you tell what application being developed here? I know it's a little bit blur, but this is the best way. Anybody? And guess what kind of application? William, do you know what application being developed just by looking at the diagram? I, I cannot I'll read it, sir. I'm so sorry. Okay, yeah, yeah. that's okay. That's that's not a uh, that's not the, the point. But by looking at the diagram, you don't need to see the wording. Do you know what uh, application being developed or system being built? Can you guess? No. Like a, something like in business, like what is it? <laughs> I don't. Yeah, well, that's okay. Explain in 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 English. Okay, okay. Like, what is it? Okay, okay. Uh, Gloria, do you know what application that? Look, if you don't know, that's fine. I have no idea. <laughs> okay, yeah, good. That's fine. That's exactly my point. Just by looking at the diagram, you will understand it. Okay, uh, because it's it's completely <laughs> what if uh, in essence this is similar to uh, Okay, 
let me share to you this one. In essence, it, this is completely different from this, for example. Okay. Any idea what this picture uh, would be? Construction about house. Because yes, exactly. And that's my point. Good diagram that I shown you previously are uh, model of something that being built. <coughs> the first uh, model is about uh, an application. The second, I don't think this is a good thing, uh, is a house. Okay, so you see my points. Okay. Uh, just for your information, the first uh, model, the first diagram that you saw was for Microsoft Word. So that's the model of Microsoft Word. Okay, just a tiny part of Microsoft Word, not the, uh, the actual Microsoft, but just a tiny part. And it's very hard to guess by looking at. Okay, so what I was saying is, uh, looking at uh, system diagram is quite uh, different from the actual system, but that's necessary because we co we can only view the progress of a system development by looking at the diagram and also our any other documentation. Okay. Uh, most of the time, people who build something will be paid in installment. Okay, uh, you will be paid like five percent after you finish this part. Uh, for example, when, when my father uh, was building our family home, uh, he paid the contractor by percentage based on the finished work. So when the contractor finished the foundation of the house, uh, my father inspect the foundation, do some testing, and then uh, paid. Then they start to erect the structure, you know, with the steel beam. Uh, pouring the concrete, and then they start to uh, build the wall, yeah. uh, and then they charge me. They ask my father for payment. My father visited with my uh, maternal grandfather, and my grandfather said to my my father, at the time, "Nah, this wall is not good. Okay, tear it down and rebuild." So my father said to the contractor, <coughs> "That's not good. Tear it down and rebuild." That's easy with building. You can see it by your with your eyes. But for information system, all you can get is a progress report, some description, and some pictures. There's probably some application being developed, but it's very hard to test it before it's finished. Okay, because a lot of uh, process for application uh, being done behind the scenes, not. Uh, will not uh, apparent to the user. <coughs> okay, anyway. So documentation, and in this case, uh, progress report, will be used for the developer to ask for payment. Uh, I was uh, hired by the Australian government for uh, overseeing the development of information system for the Ministry of Home Affairs back in 2013. So uh, my work was uh, every month or so, the developers will submit a progress report. Okay. And I with uh, the teams, the other that represent, uh, I represent the government of Australia, well, uh, the other person in that team represent the government of Indonesia and also the World Bank. Uh, we will sit together reading the report, reviewing the report, and from time to time we'll, we will uh, have meetings with the developers to explain the progress. We asking some questions. When uh, the, the quality assurance team uh, satisfied with the progress, we will give the approval, our approval, and then the government of Australia will pay the developer. If we think now, uh, it's not right, you need to revise the system, then we ask for the revision. Okay, 
and then they submit the revision, we review the revision again, and we, if we approve, then they can get paid. Okay, so that's that's the, the important of documentation. Another uh, use for documentation is to learn how to use the system. So every time you see the, uh, you learn to use new application. Oh, by the way, uh, there will be a practice, practice class uh, in computer labs <coughs> for several uh, software that we will use in this class. It's voluntary. You don't need to attend if you don't like to, but uh, if you want to learn how to create diagrams using diagramming tools and so on and so forth, uh, I strongly suggest you to attend that class. Okay. Uh, it will not affect your grade. Okay. Directly at least because uh, you will, you will, you will, I think they will have uh, some assignment also quizzes for you there, but uh, I will not include that in my final grade for you. So it's for me, it's purely to learn uh, application and skills that require for these classes. Okay. So if you want to go, go ahead and I strongly suggest you do, but it will not affect your grade directly. Okay. Back to the uh, conversation. So you need to learn how to use an application. The first thing before learning anything, uh, sorry, before using anything, sorry, is to read the manual or the documentation. And that's the difference between Indonesian and some other uh, country. Uh, Japanese, for example. Japanese factory worker, when they were given a new machinery, what they did was reading the manual. They read the manual, they understand the manual, they understand how to use the new equipment, and then they try to use the equipment. Indonesian are a bit different. They try, and then when they find difficulties, they read the manual. Okay. So that's different. But the best way to do things is to read the manual and then try to use it. <clears throat> that's why uh, I, I was in uh, many uh, open source community. In open source community, there is an abbreviation called RTFM. Uh, it's not translated uh, politely as read the fine manual, but originally it's called read the F, you know, F word manual. Because uh, there is nothing anno more annoying than uh, somebody asking something that is already on the manual. Okay, so read the manual. You need to understand. And later, if you uh, <clears throat> learning about auditing, you will see the use of manual because uh, okay, before we go that, but but uh, I'll, I'll get back to that. So documentation is not just about diagram, but you need to also uh, describe the system, and that's actually your first assignment. In your first assignment, you you observing a system and then report on your observation. So you observe on how a system works and you <coughs> report it. But uh, because most of us, you basically uh, observing the system from the outside, you will only see on how the system actually works, not how it's supposed to work. If you want to know how the system is supposed to work, you need to get inside the company and learn the documentation. And that's quite critical. I mean, observing from the outside and also the inside will give us uh, an understanding on why the system are problematic. Let me show you this picture. Okay. Another picture. I like pictures. Okay. Uh, so when you read the documentation of a system, you will know what's supposed to happen, how things are supposed to be done. Okay. What needs to be done based on that 
But when you observe a process or a system, you'll see how it actually being done. And from time to time, what's supposed to be done and what actually being done can be completely different. See this picture. This is exactly uh, illustrating my point. Okay, can you see it? <coughs> can you see the picture? Yes. Okay, good. So this pathway with a stone path here, this is the way the designer design on how the user or you know uh, the people who walk through this part should go. So they should uh, following this path and turn left here. Okay. But the user find a way on how to circumvent the design. Why? Because they think this is uh, too much. You know, walking uh, through this path is too long for them. So they take a shortcut here and. Judging by the lack of grass in this part, you can see that it has been used by many people. Okay, so they just take a shortcut here. Okay. And in many cases, that's uh, actually happened. Okay. A lot of uh, system features are being circumvented or being bypassed by users because they think it's inconvenient. Automatically, this path is shorter than using this path. Okay. So the designer uh, wasn't actually thinking that this could happen, okay. but it happened. The okay. user will find a way to circumvent the system if they think it's inconvenient. Okay. Let me give you another example. You know ATM card, right? Do you think uh, the bank electric? Let me ask you this. <clears throat> you have ATM card, right? Okay. Do you think the bank uh, know that it's possible that the ATM card and also the PIN can be exchanged hand between the, the customer to other people? Is it possible that bank, uh, can, uh, do you do you think the bank know that ATM card can be uh, move hand? So, for example, my ATM card can be. Yes, me. Can, can you repeat that? Uh, uh, I think it's possible. It's possible. But okay. maybe the bank not expected. Maybe the bank what? didn't expect that, I think. <laughs> okay. Well, yes, the bank knew. They know all along that ATM will <laughs> be exchanged. Uh, somebody else can get the ATMs and also use them. And they might understand a bit. Well, uh, I use my wife ATM card from time to time. <clears throat> and bank understood. Uh, just a moment, okay? Sorry, there was a delivery guy <coughs> at the door. Anyway, yes, the bank understand that. And yes, they expecting it to happen. Okay. Just like the designer. However, unlike the designer of that uh, part, pathway that I showed you, the bank actually could not do anything about it. The bank can only suggest, strongly suggest, that your ATM card is not being given to other people and also the bank. The bank could 
only suggest that. Okay. That's why the bank always say that if you lose your ATM card for whatever reason, you need to immediately report to the bank and block that card, deactivate that card. And whatever transaction happened before you block the ATM card, it will be on your account, not the bank. Okay, that's right. Because the bank understand that and that they could do, they couldn't do anything to prevent that. Well, uh, this uh, part, <clears throat> it's much simpler. You know, if you don't want user to take the shortcut, just build a fence. That's it. You know, it doesn't need to be a full size fence, but you know, probably a meter or meter and a half. They will go through the path. Okay. So that's it. And from time to time, a lot of problem with an information system doesn't necessarily mean that the system at fault, but because the user do not follow the proper way of using the system. For example, uh, regarding the password, let's see. <clears throat> many people use the same password for many websites or application, right? I think uh, some of you did that because I did that. Too. Some user uh, never change their password, right? That's why I'm now, uh, nowadays uh, I rely less on password and uh, using more uh, biometrics, right? You know, fingerprint, face ID, or whatever the uh, other technology called. Okay, so that's why because password is uh, very weak. <coughs> okay. Now let's see the documentation. So your first assignment is actually creating documentation, but it's called as narrative description. So you tell the story about the system that you observe. You tell as in detail as possible about all the process that being done. Okay. So what are the first step? What are the second step? Who involved? What are documents that need to be uh, used? Things like that. Okay. Now uh, let's start with system documentation technique. Uh, <clears throat> so you need to be able to prepare and use uh, documentation tools. Uh, I think you are in the middle of uh, preparing narrative documentation, and then after you already describe the system, you need to be able to draw the diagram. Okay, for that, uh, we will use two diagrams, uh, data flow diagrams and also flow chart. We will uh, explain that better. Okay, so why document the system? First, accountant must be able to read documents and understand how system works. This is especially when you uh, conducting audit. Auditors need to understand the system and then uh, to assess the risk. Is there any risk? That's why uh, the bank, they all understand the risk of a DM card being exchanged or being given to other people or lost. That's why the bank then implement uh, procedures in order to minimize, especially for the bank, the loss. You know, just in case an ATM card being stolen or being given to other people. Uh, and actually, the bank doesn't really care if you know uh, you give your ATM card to somebody else. You give your ATM card and pin number to somebody else, and that somebody else uh, withdraw money from your account. The bank, the bank doesn't really care if that's happened. What they really care is as long as you don't blame the bank for that, they're fine with it. But that's why they, they protect themselves. They, they know that's a risk and it's quite common occurrence. That's why the bank use that. <coughs> Another uh, reason for documenting system is because of 
regulation, especially in, in the US, Sarbanes Oxley Act. We will discuss Sarbanes Oxley later. Okay. Requires management to assess internal controls and audit to evaluate assessment. So this is regulation. Okay. Uh, if you look at our university, our university has been accredited with ISO 9000. ISO 9000 basically means we need to document everything. We document what we did and we do what that's being documented. So, for example, a process needs to be documented. And if you do something, it has to be done according to the documentation. And that's cover everything. Uh, if you know somebody put uh, no smoking sign, for example, it has to be documented. Who initiated the process of uh, installing no smoking sign? Who designed and created the no smoking sign? On whose authority that no smoking sign design being selected? Things like that. And who if, uh, installed the no smoking sign? Who supervised the installation of that no smoking sign? Things like that. You know, it has to be documented. Okay. And that will be used also for system development and changes. Like I said, uh, many times I found that uh, a problem in an organization related to information system stem not from the faulty system, but stem from the user did not follow the proper documentation. They didn't follow how to use the documentation. <coughs> and it could be fatal. Okay, uh, you remember the Lion Air uh, accident a few years ago? Okay. At the time, it was shocking, right? Because the plane that uh, used by Lion Air was quite new. It's just three months, and yet it's uh, <coughs> in fault. Uh, it's lost control and uh, lost at sea. Okay. At first, Boeing blamed the pilot and also Lion, because they didn't follow the procedure. That's standard, okay? But then it was found that Boeing actually never made any documentation about their new uh, plane, okay? Boeing assumed, well, not assumed, Boeing said that it was similar to the previous plane, but it's not. It was not the same. It's completely different airplane. And if that's happened, the proper procedure was to introduce the documentation and then train the pilot based on that documentation. Okay. And then five months after a Lion Air accident, Ethiopian Air accident happened. In this time, Boeing already uh, <coughs> published the documentation. They already trained the pilot. And what happened? Ethiopian Air pilot did what Supposed, they supposed to do. They follow Boeing documentation. What happened? Still accident. So apparently, the plane itself has a fault. Okay. So this kind of documentation will <coughs> show what's the problem. In case of Boeing, that's the, the system problem. The, the, the plane itself uh, was at fault. But in some other cases, I saw that uh, many years ago, my friend lost his money from his bank account. Uh, he felt, uh, he believed he never withdraw the money. But the bank said, it's withdrawal. Uh, fortunately for my friend, the withdrawal was from <coughs> uh, the office of the bank, you know, from, from uh, the bank counter with the teller. <coughs> So no ATM, no internet banking. So my friend demanded to see the document. Finally, the bank produced uh, the withdrawal form. And in that form, clearly, that the signature of the customer was completely different from my friend's signature. And then they pulled up the 
CCTV video and it shown that the people who with the person who withdraw the money was not the customer. So in that case, the teller was at fault because the teller did not follow proper procedures on verifying customer identity. <coughs> the teller did not verify the face with the ID. Uh, the teller did not verify the signatures with the ID uh, comparing the signature on the withdrawal form, the ID and also the one in the archive of the bank. Okay, so that's happened. <coughs> okay, the first diagram is a business process diagram. This is a visual way to represent the activities in the business process. Okay, uh, so this is the, all the symbols. Start is a circle with thin line, and is the circle with a uh, bold line. And then there is activity. This is a square with rounded uh, corners. Decision, a diamond, and also data flow or flow is using arrow. So this is an example. Okay. So this is the people who conducted that activity, and this is the activities performed. So a new employee, for example, starting by complete new employee form, human resource complete employee change form, payroll will start the payment, and then it's uh, finished after the updated pay employee and payroll file, so on and so forth. Okay. The next is data flow diagram. Okay. Data flow diagram actually only have a uh, It shows where the data coming from and where the data is going and what happened to the data. So it's this way, data flow diagram. It shows how the data flow. Okay. Okay, let's uh, do some exercise. Okay, uh, most of the time uh, for uh, drawing diagram, I will use Visio. Okay. Our university have a visio and it's available in computer labs, but unfortunately, uh, the license for visio was is actually uh, limited. <clears throat> so I, I've asked the information system office once and they said that it's not for students. It's only available for computer labs or lecturers. I will use Visio because a lot of my works require advanced uh, diagramming techniques. But for you, you don't need to use pirated version of Visio. Okay, I'm not condoning any piracy. Okay, so for you, I already prepare. Uh, let me see. Ah, okay. This is called di. DIA diagramming tools. Okay. I already put the link on uh, Microsoft Teams. <coughs> you, you can download it. It's quite small. It's just like 20 megabytes. Uh, uh, it's available in Windows or Mac OS if you like. And you can create diagram just like Visio. It's just a uh, much simpler version of Visio. And for our purposes in this class, uh, it's sufficient. Okay, so if you want to draw a diagram instead of using a uh, pirated version of Visio, I would strongly suggest you to use this. Okay, I already put the link on Microsoft Teams. Okay, now uh, <clears throat> I'll use this. Okay. Okay, uh, let's start by um, trying to draw data flow diagram. When we draw data flow diagram, we need to understand, uh, remember last Saturday, the event, the parties involved, and also the <coughs> resources. Okay. But in uh, data flow diagram, we need to understand that's that we need to know. You need to understand who involved in that system and what system being drawn. Okay. For example, cash sales. Okay. 
uh, Christian Allen. Okay. Uh, we will draw later a uh, cash sales system. Okay. In cash sales system, who are the parties involved with that transaction? Listen. Who are involved in? Uh, yeah, who are involved in uh, cash sales transaction? Who are involved? Have you ever performed cash sales transaction? Not Experience? yet, sir. Really? You never buy anything from a convenience store or supermarket? Have you ever buy anything from supermarket? Or oh, yes. Uh, yes, okay, okay. So if you buy something from minimarket, your position is as what? Customer. Customer, good. And on the other part is the? Cashier. The cashier, okay. Who, uh, cashier is a position within a company, right? But uh, the cashier representing what in transaction? Remember, uh, business process is exchange between two parties, okay? So the other party is his customer. Who are the other parties? <coughs> It's just last Saturday. Is that a seller? Yes, yeah, seller. Good. Seller. So there will be customer or buyer and seller. But, okay, let me share this. Okay, so first, if we draw a data flow diagram, we draw what are the system first. So say, cash, sales. System. Okay. Cash sales system. Okay. What the part that involves a uh, present? Buyer or customer. Right? Yeah. Buyer. Okay. okay, good. Buyer or customer. Yeah. Okay. Who else involved? Is that the buyer? Who? who uh, no, who are involved beside buyer? <coughs> the seller, right? The seller. Yeah. So in this case, okay. the seller is represented by this cash sales system. This is the seller. Okay. So we have the buyer, we have the seller. The seller in this case represented by cash sales system. Okay. Now, Remember the transaction is exchange between two parties. Okay. So what the buyer get from the, the seller here? The goods. Goods. Yeah, goods or services. Uh, either way. Okay, so I'll draw that. This is how you did it. Okay. Oops, our services. Okay, with our services. Okay, <clears throat> this is what the buyer received from the seller. What the buyer gave to the seller? Money. Money, good. Or payment. Thank you for that. I'll put down payment because it's not necessarily money. It could be in form of non-cash payment. Uh, card, voucher, you know, or uh, 
electronic money or whatever check you know if somebody is there. okay so good and services given to buyer buyer will do okay so if you uh, follow my explanation i already explained about the customer and also the seller that inside the system cashier Christian, Alan, is actually here inside this okay so in data flow diagram we will have external parties and also internal parties this is the internal parties the system internal the system and the external is the buyer okay how could we differentiate between external and internal external parties only have two to this in that system which is first receiving information or from the system or sending information to the system or receiving data or sending data to the system that's it if you look at buyer they don't uh, accept or receive uh, product they don't display the product they don't uh, create anything about the product right uh, they don't uh, determine prices for the product uh, if it's manufactured in the restaurant for example the customer didn't cook the product right the customer just asking for the product or you know receiving the product and paying for the product. that's it so if you have a lot of uh, parties involved in a transaction one way to identify whether the external to the system or internal is looking at their activity. If they just receive the data or sending the data, then they're external. Okay. <clears throat> Let's do another example. Class registration. You just did your class registration a few weeks ago. So I think it's still fresh in your memory. Okay. Uh, Gloria, uh, what do you remember from uh, class registration? What you did in, during class registration? Class registration, sir? Yes. What you did? Did you do anything? No. No, oh, I forget, sir. <laughs> it's just a few weeks ago. Okay. Okay. No. Okay. So a cluster registration is a bit complicated because uh, there are a lot of things or activities that you could not see. Okay, you could not see that, but usually around the time that you prepare for your final exam, the head of program uh, or program leader will have a meeting and then uh, all the head of programs will try to predict or try to estimate what are the classes or subjects need to be offered next semester. For example, uh, we have accounting information system now, right? What's after, what subject following accounting information system? Management information system. So that classes need to be offered next semester. And they also need to uh, understand how many students will enroll into those classes. Okay. They, they can calculate and then they, they need to know how many lecturers for particular classes need uh, for teaching those classes. Okay. And in there, especially with the, the internal uh, lecturers, not from somebody else from outside, yeah. 
<coughs> they already faced with a lot of restriction. First, a lecturer have to teach at least eight credit per semester. So the minimum teaching load is eight credit per lecturer per semester. But there's also maximum. If I'm not mistaken, it was 16 credit. What happened if, for example, I teach 20 credits? Yeah, fine, 20 credit. That's, I can teach 20 credit, but the university will only pay me up to 16. So I will teach for credits for free. This is uh, something that a lot of lecturers, including me, don't want to do. Okay. <clears throat> We are not working for, you know, uh, charity. Okay, so, uh, yeah, this is a lesson for you. Uh, never do anything for free, especially if you're good at it. Okay. For free doesn't necessarily mean to be paid. You know, from time to time, we did charity work. You know, with, with uh, you know, uh, some organization, but even though we did not take uh, getting paid uh, with money, but we're getting paid by something else. Okay, and that's not free. Okay, anyway, so that's the first restriction. Second, each lecturer has their own specialties. For example, I could not teach managerial accounting. I could not teach auditing. I could not teach taxation because that's not my specialty. If the uh, program forced me to teach that, it will be disastrous. So the number of lecturers on each specialty or each uh, discipline, if you like, are also a constraint. Now, for information system, only I think only two or three lecturers that could teach uh, subjects in information system. Myself, Pak Novi, and Pak Wisnu. And Pak Wisnu and Pak, both Pak Wisnu and Pak Novi only able to teach uh, accounting information system, information system man management information system, and system analysis and design. They could not teach. Uh, information system seminar, they could not do a database management system, both are always me because I developed that subject. <coughs> okay, so that's another restriction. Okay. Some lecturers could not uh, teach because they are studying. Uh, they are uh, in the process of getting their doctoral, like Burus Tiana, for example. She's currently uh, pursuing her doctoral degree in Malaysia, so she could not teach. Okay. Uh, and that's that's just a part of the. And then after after uh, they decided who will teach what, each lecturer will be sent a form, okay. and in that form there is a list of classes that need to be teach. Oh, yeah, another restriction. One lecturer could not teach more than three subjects. So, for example, this semester I only teach accounting information system, information system development, and also uh, database management system. That's it, three. I could not teach five different subjects, for example. That's evaluation. <coughs> okay, anyway. Uh, so the lecturer will be given a form with all the classes that has to be uh, taught next semester. And then I'll decide it uh, on the schedule. For example, accounting information system, I'll teach on Monday, 10 o'clock. Okay. Uh, originally, your class, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I ask uh, the program that I teach your class at seven o'clock, actually. Okay, and the other class uh, was supposed to be on 10 o'clock, so today. 
But then uh, in the middle of the process, Bu Nadia, <coughs> the international program head, asking me if I uh, able to switch. Okay, so your class fro move from seven to ten, and the other class move from ten to seven because he said that uh, you only to have another class or at seven. Is that true? Do you have any class on Monday seven o'clock? Okay, yeah, that's why. So that's what happened. So after that, after uh, and remember, in our faculty there are three programs: <coughs> economic, management, and accounting. The three different pro program leaders. So uh, Pak Agus Budi, the vice dean for academic affairs, will have another meeting to synchronize the schedule. For example, uh, in Monday, seven o'clock. We only have 10 classroom, for example, and yet the, uh, the lecturer that one who teach Monday, seven o'clock, uh, 12. So what happened with the other two? The, those other two have to move to another schedule. So, so that's Pak Agus Budi work. And then after that, uh, after finishing everything, uh, ironing out all the uh, things, you know, crossing the I, sorry, dotting the I, crossing the T's, then you will be given class schedule. During the class registration system, you key in your class selection, and then you'll get the class registration uh, proof as PTK. Okay, so that's what happened. Okay, now, Michael, let's see. Uh, who are the external parties for class registration system? If you get my studies. Uh, students. Good. Who else? So you just receive and sending something. Students, obviously, that's good. Uh, in fact, uh, I'll put it here. So website. No, website is not person. The admin. Admin is internal because the admin could do any could do something. Uh, the admin could uh, delay the system. The admin could enter new data. The admin can change the data. That and that include the head of the program or program leaders. They can open new class. They can offer new class. They can close uh, a class because of lack of uh, enrollment. Somebody else? So bank for payment, maybe? No, 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 we are not talking about payment yet. We, we, we still uh, on the registration system. The From my story. Who? The lecturer. Good, the lecturer. So my role as a lecturer is actually just receiving the classes that I want uh, uh, that I have to teach, and then I give them the schedule. <coughs> okay, so but this is how would you do it? Okay. Hey, good. So, uh, well, Stefania, what data given by student to class registration system? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, yes. The, the class schedule that you want, okay? Class selection, or schedule selection. That, okay. Okay, so what the student receive from the class registration system? The schedule, I think. Okay, uh, it's actually that one, the proof of enrollment, SPPK. 
Yeah, yeah. It's obviously uh, having scheduled it. Okay. Good. Now the lecturers, the lecturers uh, will receive. Uh, from the system, the lecturer will receive class. So that this is uh, this is the, the lecturer give <coughs> schedule here. Okay. And will receive something. Okay, so what's the, the lecturer will receive uh, schedule? Uh, sorry, will give schedule. Uh, this is for simplification. Okay, they will receive class roster who be enrolled in their classes. Okay, <coughs> so. That's how you draw a uh, data flow diagram. Okay. Any question so far? Okay. Let's continue. Uh, you can read the complete uh, process and also if you like to follow the computer class, uh, you, you can uh, learn about that. Okay. But Okay, so <clears> that's <throat> the tablet diagram. And then there is flowchart. Flowchart is a diagram to use for showing step by step of a process. Who did what? Okay. In data flow diagram, it's only showing how the data flow from one parties to another. Okay, but with flowchart, it will be in more detail. You know, who did what first, uh, and then what happened to a document? For example, if if you uh, withdraw money from uh, your bank account uh, in through the banking counter by the teller, for example, uh, you have to fill out document withdrawal and then submit the withdrawal form, sign withdrawal form with your banking uh, credentials, your, your uh, uh, banking books, uh, your account books, your ATM card, your ID, for example, and then it will be checked and so on and so forth. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, in this, so this is the, the, the symbols for flowchart. There are a lot of them. Don't worry, you don't need to memorize this. PCO and uh, DIA will have these uh, symbols ready for you with all the explanation. Okay. So I'll give you an example of flowchart. Okay, let me do this. So this is an uh, example of a flowchart. For each party, it doesn't really uh, differentiate whether parties are uh, external or internal, unlike data flow diagram. So each party will have their own column. And in that column, you will draw based on the narrative description how to prepare the initiated audit, prepare statement management, and so on and so forth. So their activities will be uh, drawn here using all the flowchart symbol. Okay. So you just need to read the documentation, the uh, descriptive narration, and then uh, using the proper symbols to draw the diagram, okay? Uh, next week, when you submit thing, uh, after you submitted your assignment, I'll give you examples, okay? So don't worry. <coughs> okay, that's, that's, 
scripted me to the slide. I think it's the only the last slide for today. Okay, so that's okay. yeah, that upload the account process. Go charge. Yeah, that's that's the last. Any question so far? <coughs> oh yeah, Gloria, if I, you want you want to ask question? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. So I want to ask about the assignment. OK, sure. So we made the narrative description, right? Mm -hmm. uh, should we put the diagram also? No, uh, the diagram will be next. OK, so only the narrative. Description. Only the narrative. OK, uh, let's let's uh, move. Uh, let's let your progression being step by step, you know. That. So that's why I need you to make the narrative description as detailed as possible. You know, who involved, what kind of information required from each of the participants, where the information come from, to whom the information be given, you know, what information required any uh, document that you need to up, for example if you need to upload uh, your national id or did you need to submit your banking account for example put as much detail as possible okay okay thank you sir no worries uh, any other questions okay good uh now creating the script uh, not, uh yes william you want to ask something uh so i'm so sorry about this uh in last section i i heard that one of uh two two one group uh looking looking for two to what is business small business yeah right? yeah so we compare it it's okay it's different like there are some of them in like cosmetic and some of them in gaming. We compare it like right? instead of yes, yeah. it it should be different. So uh, it at least it should be different companies. Uh, if it's uh, if both companies uh, are from different industry or business, that's even better. So for example, one company is retail, the other companies are say. Uh, you know, food retails, the other company is uh, services, fine. One company electro selling electronics, the other company uh, selling cosmetics, no problems. Okay, okay good. Now, uh, let's get back to documentation. In practice, in reality, well, not reality, in practice, Making documentation is not a one-off process. Okay, it's always an iterative process. So you make a draft, and then you go to the uh, stakeholder, the users, the manager, everybody that involved, and to present to them your draft, asking for. Uh, Vision, asking for uh, input, asking for uh, correction, and then they'll give you the revision. Uh, they, they give you their uh, view, you know, to make some adjustment, creating the second draft, present to them again, have some correction, so on and so forth, until you and the other parties achieve an agreement. Yep, that's it. That's the documentation that we agree. And then that agreement should be put in writing also. Why? Because people can forget for some reason. People can change their mind or the people themselves can be changed or substituted by some others. So, let's get back to the, my story uh, when I work for uh, the Australian government. So when the developer designed the system, <coughs> it was intended for use, some user. 
this user they were contractor hired by the Indonesian government. In the middle of uh, system development, this contractor that's supposed to be the user for that system is running out of contract. So, and the government decided, the Indonesian government decided not to renew their contract. Because uh, if I'm not mistaken, the, the Ministry of Home Affairs was a bit disappointed with their performance, dissatisfied. So the Indonesian government decided to hire new contractor. So new people coming, and then, you know, as a courtesy, not necessarily uh, has to be done, but yeah, it is. Uh, we need to uh, let the new user know about the system. So we present the system to the new. Uh, that's in the middle of the development. We present to them. We uh, explain to them everything. No, not not as uh, the developer. And then suddenly, all the users said. That's not the right system for us. So I actually showed them the agreement, the written agreement that signed by the previous user. No, this is, has been agreed upon by the previous user, the, uh, the World Bank. You know, it's, it's very painful to work, uh, to deal with World Bank. If, if you ever work, uh, work and then dealing with World Bank, remember my words. It has been approved by Indonesian government and also the Australian government. So four parties agreed on that design and signed their agreement. But the new user said, no, that's the old user. We are new user. We want something new. OK, so we go to their process, which is the people at the Ministry of Home Affairs. The Indonesian government, and we said to the, the person in charge, but the new user asking for completely different system. This is their uh, request, and the, the the person in charge said, "Okay, so what's wrong with that?" So uh, before we, we we present our finding to the person in charge. <coughs> We already make some calculation, and we said to that person in charge, I, I could not <laughs> mention this name. Uh, we said that, well, if you want us to change the design, it will require additional time, which is about a year. So the system will be finished a year later than the previous uh, agreement, and we did additional five billion rupiah because it will change the whole system. So that person in charge was shocked when he heard. I don't think he had any problem with delay of a year, but five billion rupiah really shocked. And the government of the Australia already said, no, we, we will not add, uh, we will not pay five billion rupiah more. That's it, we already paid for that. We agreed on the previous design. We don't want anything else. So. After that, the person in charge call all the users. They have meeting and uh, the boss said, look, this is the agreed upon system. You use it or we will replace you with somebody else. That's what happened. Okay, so that's why documentation is very important. Written documentation. <coughs> okay, so if anything happen, you always have, look, this is what we agreed upon. You sign on it. Okay. And like I said, it's not one off process. It's very natural to have your first draft being revised and then another revision and another revision. Okay. That's why you need also to document the changes. So what's what's different from first revision and second revision? Who asked that revision? Okay. So if that person who asking for changes later deny it, you have the evidence. That's why meeting minutes is very uh, important, especially if you can uh, record 
that meeting, like this, for example, it would be a great help in the future. Okay. Any question? No? Okay. Uh, that's it for today. Uh, next week, we will have offline classes. Okay. So I'll see you in campus. Okay. And remember, uh, the deadline for your group assignment is before our classes next week. Okay. So that's it. Good morning and see you next week.